morning, everyone. Thank you, Kim. Uh, Kim, while you were talking, I was remembering our old friend, Lou Rukeyser. Does anybody remember Wall Street Week? Oh, yes. Well, Lou used to call people like myself elves. And I had dinner with him one night. I said, Lou, where'd you get the word elf from? He said, I made it up. I said, why, Lou? He says, because I don't think my viewing audience knows what you guys do for a living. I said, you're absolutely right. That was, uh, I'll say, 1981, 82, sometime when I had that conversation. And this wonderful lady, we were on a cruise with Lou, and I said to Kim, I said, could you get me to sit him down for an hour? We'll get him a couple of drinks, and I want to talk to him about technical analysis. So she convinced Lou to do that. And he sat there like this for an hour. And at the very end, he went, hmm. <laughs> He didn't say it was bad, he didn't say it was good, he said, hmm. So I, I think that was a compliment. Honestly, I think that was a compliment. Coming from Lou, that was a compliment. Oh, I have to tell you another story about Wall Street Week. Um, I was at one of the conferences, it wasn't a money show, I, I don't know where it was, it was about two years ago, and a little lady comes up to me, she's waving a crooked finger in my face and she said, you were in my bedroom every Friday night. I said, shh, don't tell my wife. <laughs> That's how popular that show was, that was a great show. Well, um, I don't like to call it technical analysis anymore. I like to call it data visualization. As Tim, Kim was saying, you know, you get everything here. You get it on your, uh, on your phone. You get charts on your phone if you want, whatever you want. It's amazing. Any kind of data. Up is good, down is bad. That's my phrase, you know, okay. What is up? I don't know. Let's, let's take a look at a few things. You know, um, I've been doing this for, as you said, 52 years. And I, I got to say, honestly, folks, in the 52 years I've been in this, I've never seen a confluence of confusion out there, whether it's Brexit, whether it's the tariff wars, whether it's immigration, the Russians are in Venezuela. And now we got people running for presidency next year who are talking about socialism. Abi Maria, where are we going? And, and you know, there are two ways of looking at the market, two ways of writing about it or speaking about it. You can be anticipatory, say, well, today the market's going to do such and such based on your research. Or you can say, well, let's react to the news and then I'll tell you what's going to happen. And this has been a very reactionary market. I love to get up in front of you and say, well, I think we're going to 30,000, you know, and, and, and give you all the reasons why I feel, well, I can't do that today. In fact, I was at a, a conference, uh, I think two weeks ago, and in Boston, and I had the horrible time getting up in front of these people, and I know this firm very well. I've spoken to them many, many times, and many people in the audience are good friends, and, and I, I I didn't know what to say to them. My charts, and I'll show you some of them, the ugliest charts I've ever seen. And I didn't want to be super negative. If I had to be negative, I'm negative. But, you know, I just, everything I was going to show them was just one picture is uglier than the next. And um, it was on a Tuesday morning, week, two weeks ago. And well, I, just before I got up and made my presentation, the, my presentation was at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And I was watching the TV that morning, watching the market, and the market had started a takeoff. Remember? That was on a Tuesday. Boy, I was impressed with the rally. And I was watching the follow-through and the broadness of that rally. I said, wow, this looks pretty interesting. So I ended my conversation with these people. I'm saying, I humbly stand in front of you, and I'm going to make a statement, and I have no real evidence to really, really back it up. I said, I think we made a market low. And they're looking at me after I went through all the negatives. And I'm going to do it for you today. I'll go through all the negatives and I'll show you some of the positives. And you know what? Since that rally on Tuesday, we've had some nice follow through on the upside. You can see it. Look at the charts you're seeing on the, uh, on the screen right now. By the way, what you're looking at, I have the top graph is the Dow Jones Industrial Average and the bottom graph is the Dow Jones uh, Transportation Index. I like to put them both together because the oldest theory in technical analysis is Dow's theory, Charles Dow. You know, the guy, uh, I have to say, I, uh, 
in his simplicity, he was a bloody genius. And you know, in his, his day, but I'm talking about the late 1800s, 1885, 86, whatever it was when he started doing this, uh, he, there were no economists, and he said, gee, I wonder how the economy's doing. So he decided to create the averages. Railroads, was the rail average was the first index he made. He said, the rails are going up, the, that's the biggest industry in the country, that must be good for the economy. Well, it didn't work. After about 10 years, he said, well, what am I missing? He said, well, products. What are the railroads haul? Products. So we created Dow Jones Industrial Average in 1895. And he said, if they both go off, they're both mutually interdependent parts of the economy. If industrials are doing well and the railroads are pushing them up, and if they're both going up, things must be great. That was his theory. And I still look at it today. Uh, does anyone know uh, a lady by the name of Abby Joseph Cohen? Yes. Goldman Sachs. Well, Abby and I share a panel every year in March in New York City. It's Quinnipiac University it puts on this wonderful program, and she and I have been doing it for, I think, about 10 years. And one of the presentations a couple of years ago, I was talking about Dow Theory in front of all these students, and she's, oh, Ralph, no one looks at that dumb old indicator anymore. We don't, we economists don't look at railroads to measure how the economy is doing. I said, oh, really, Abby? That's interesting. I said, what, what do we look at today? You know what she said? I found it so fascinating. They look at the manufacture of cardboard boxes. Think about it. Everything's shipped today. I don't know about you guys, but if, if my wife's any indication, she says to me, oh, I never shop. And outside my door every morning is a pile of boxes. In fact, the UPS and, and Federal Express, I think I'm the first stop on their route every morning. I mean, it's, it's a joke. But isn't that interesting? So I turned around to Abby and said, hey, Abby, by the way, who ships most of those boxes? Federal Express and UPS. And guess what, Ab Abby? They're in the, the Dow Theory. They're in the Dow Transportation Index. So she kind of looked at me and said, oh, well. <laughs> but what I'm saying, what I'm trying to say, it's, it's valid. It's one of the things I look at. It's a macro thing. And I just, if you look at the left-hand side of the graph, you'll see the peaks. The, uh, the railroad, excuse me, the, indus uh, the industrial average peaked in September of last year. No, excuse me, October of last year. But the transportation average did not do that. So for the first time in a couple of years, we have what the Dow theory called negative divergence. And for the whole period of time, and look at what happened, that sharp decline in December. I don't have to tell you how horrible that was. That was the beginning of Dow's bear market. And even with this rally that we've had coming over, I, call, I like to call that the, the Winston Churchill bottom. That's V for victory. Look at that coming out of the December Christmas low. It's phenomenal. First couple of months of this year, this market was on fire. But they failed to make new highs. So if, you're, if you follow the theory, you say, well, it's a rally in a bear market as far as old Charlie is concerned. And that was my message in Boston when I was there a couple of weeks ago. I said, you know, I, I, I don't just look at that. I look at a lot of things. But we need to turn that and look at the, look at the complete right side of the graphs. Look at this. this is the last couple of weeks. That's the rally I'm talking about now. I think that low we made two weeks ago is an important low. Now, you're going to say to me, what's, what's the outlook for the short term? Well, I think we're going to go. I, I, I think you're going to have a lot of fluctuation here. Seriously, you're going to have a lot of volatility because of all of this noise around the market. But I'm just going to still stand in front of you and say, as long as that low holds that was made two weeks ago, holds, ladies and gentlemen, I think you'll see new highs by the end of the year. That's my forecast for, for this meeting today. And if I have to change, you'll know it. If the Dow Industrials breaks that low, and then I, you know, then we're going to get back and maybe, and there are a lot of people saying we have to test the Winston Churchill bottom, that big light, that spiking low down to December. I, I was in that category up until two weeks ago. So I think we consolidate here, and maybe there's some good news for China or something. If that happens, ladies and gentlemen, I'm, only, I'm not forecasting for sure, uh, you could very easily see new highs. All right. 
let's see what's, uh, see this line here? This is, uh, oh, I got five minutes. Yeah, I didn't think I had too much time. I got to run. This, this graph here is the, uh, is the breadth of the market. In other words, how many stocks go up and how many get down every day? I listen to some of these talking heads on television. Sometimes I have to scratch my head and say, oh, what are they talking about? You'll hear someone say, well, the market was great today. It went up 50 points. Did Al. Yeah, but he didn't tell you that 1,000 stocks went up and 2,000 stocks went down. Twice the number of stocks deteriorated that day and went up. That's called bad breath. Joke. Bad breath. Okay. Anyway, that picture looked terrible, but look at my rally. See, this is where that arrow is on the complete right-hand side. If this market continues to broaden out, which I think it will, I think the next few weeks you'll be very, very interested. A lot of control rotation, and then we may see new highs. Okay. There's the NASDAQ. Look at the NASDAQ coming out of that low. Pretty impressive, pretty impressive, but I need new highs. I think we'll see it. Let me quickly go through this. I'm getting the hook. And uh, this is consumer uh, discretionary. See the line on the bottom? That's this sector versus the S&P 500. Look at that little oh, complete right-hand side. You see that mo it moving up? That means it's starting to outperform the market. I'm going to give you other sectors that look like that. Consume, this is consumer discretion. Consumer staples looks like that. Believe it or not, materials are starting to outperform. This is only in the last two weeks. Healthcare. Ah, I didn't expect that. And technology. With all of this talk about, uh, you know, Google and Facebook and you know, they're in trouble with the Fed, and I, I think rightly so in some cases, you know, but uh, regardless, semiconductors, even with the problems with China, starting to outperform. Interesting. This is why I'm a little bit more optimistic short term. That's energy. I, I noticed, you noticed I didn't say energy yet. Okay. There's the health care. That's what I was talking about there. Okay. Let me quickly run through some of these slides. There's technology I was telling you about. Look at that move, Alaska, oh, on the complete right-hand side. Impressive. Look at it outperforming the S&P 500. Look, that's the bottom chart. When you see that bottom line doing that, you know the institutions, all the large money, cap money, has to chase that stuff. They have to own it. Okay. Uh, here, McDonald's. You like that picture? I'm going to show you more that looked like that. Um, American Express looks like that, Coca-Cola looks like that, Merck looks like that, Microsoft looks like that, AMD, Advanced Micro Devices, Technology looks like that, Teradyne looks like that, all the railroads, CSX and uh, North, North, uh, Norfolk Southern, uh, and Union Pacific look like that. I don't want to talk about this thing. Look at that, Triple M. Oof. What well, looks like that? Uh, we don't want to talk negatives, but uh, Boeing looks like that. Got crushed, Caterpillar, DuPont, uh, FedEx, unfortunately. A couple of the airlines, American Airlines and uh, 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 Alaska Air, look beaten up. How am I doing for time? I'm all right. Emerging markets starting to pick up a look. Look at the right hand side. See? Almost outperforming. Look at that. Almost. It's trying to, but it hasn't gotten there yet. This is China. Now look, it's got a little uptick in China. Not much, but that obviously is another bellwether. If China starts doing well, that means maybe the negotiations are doing well. So a couple of things to look at. There's Germany, okay. Commodities. Uh, I now live in Minnesota. Don't ask how I got to Minnesota, but it's wonderful. I have a farm. Uh, it's all leased out, and the farmers, I have to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, you talk about wet weather out here, boy, oh boy, we had terrible time. And the poor farmers had a very, very difficult time planting. And that over on the right side, that uptick in corn is because <laughs> there's a lot less supply this year. And there's gold. A number to keep in mind, gold, is 1,400. If gold goes to 1,400, that picture starts to go up. And that would be very impressive move, so keep your eye on that. And I'm going to end with, before I... What does that say? It says I'm finished? <laughs> okay. Well, here, I want to show you this picture. That's me and my buddy Henry VIII. I painted the largest hand-painted chart of the Dow Jones Industrial Average in my barn. 
And the Wall Street Journal called me up two years ago and said, hey, we want to, tell you, we want to do an article. I said, wait. See, on the right-hand side, I said, if it goes to 23,000, you can say the market went through the roof. And they did. <laughs> and on the left-hand side, inside my barn, look at this picture. You talk about pre-computer days. I had a war room in Wall Street, the famous war room in Wall Street. That chart on the left-hand side is eight feet high, 22 feet long. I had four of them. I had a staff of people maintain them every day. That's 30 years of history you're looking at. And you know what the old timers told me, Ralph? Just look at the colors. When you see green, that means the market's oversold should rally, okay? That green is good. However, if you see a lot of green, you're in trouble, baby. And you know what? That was the crash in 1973-74. You're looking at all that green. Just look at the colors. And my last comment, I have a nephew who's a nephew. The man's 48 years old. He's on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. He's a floor governor, very important. I said, he said, great. Jay, do you have anything that the New York Stock Exchange wants to throw out, you know, flags or something. Look at what he sends me. That's the banner of the bicentennial of the New York Stock Exchange. It's hanging in mid-Minnesota. Mid Thank you for your time. I was told I can ask a couple, answer a couple of questions if you have. No questions? Yes. Well, yeah, the gentleman's asked me, he showed me a bunch of charts that look like they bought them. Well, remember the one with the McDonald's? And all, I gave you the ones that already had momentum. The sectors that look like the, the yes, yes, the ones that I liked, like consumer discretionary, yes, they bought them. Any other questions? Yes, yes, sir. Hi. Mm. Uh, the question is uh, with communications and the speed of everything these days, what will make the next market go? Tariffs. You get any kind of resolution on tariffs, even moderately, this market is, will, will definitely uh, respond positively to that. So you and I think about it, we'll have a beer later and we'll talk about what are the odds of that happening. I'll give it 50-50 chance, you know. Okay, thank you for your time.